Hey everybody, welcome to The Huddle. Um, I have John David Rainey with us today, which is our uh, enterprise CFO. So John David, great to have you on. And it's a, a big day, it's earnings day. So we had a lot of calls today and a lot of other things that are happening all across the business. And I wanna start by saying this isn't the first time we've, we've done a recording together. We were just talking about this back in, I think it's 2018, what we've concluded. We did something that I was doing at Sam's called Business on Bikes which was fun because you get to go ride a bike around Northwest Arkansas and have a conversation and they turned out pretty well. And here we are five later, five years later and you are the CFO. So well, cool. And notably, we're not wearing spandex. Yeah, <laughs> and no one wants to see that. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and, that was my first uh, time to Bentonville. First yeah. foray here and uh, first time I'd actually met anybody that worked at Walmart headquarters. Yeah, and uh, you got to do it in spandex. Yeah. Yeah, super awkward. But, yeah, I was uh, more worried about on that interview actually not getting dropped on the bike <laughs> than, yeah. than anything else. Yeah, yeah we take it slow. And, and uh, I, yeah. I would always do this thing with people I didn't know. I'd wait until I knew there was a hill coming up. And right when we got ask there, a ask question. a hard question. Yeah. Let them talk. Yeah, and I then, noticed that. Yeah, they start there like, and then they just tell you everything because mm -hmm. you have to concentrate on not crashing <laughs> right. up the hill. Um, but they're great. And in case you're ever in Northwest Arkansas, it is a great place to ride a bike. And yeah. A lot of other things, great place. So um, now that you're here, let's start with what was interesting, motivating about the idea of coming to Walmart as an associate. Well, uh, there's probably four or five companies in the world that I would have actually answered the phone for to consider leaving the position that I was in. But when the largest company in the world calls you, you sort of have to pay attention and take the call. And so I, uh, you know, I, I followed Walmart from afar. I was in. Um, a digitally oriented um, space at PayPal and saw what you all were doing in e-commerce in some of those areas and it was impressive. Um, you uh, really grew your business during the, the pandemic and, and I think importantly continued to grow it even after the pandemic. And so that was the first thing. But um, then when I came here and I started meeting with the team, yourself and Doug and others, you really get to understand the strategy and, and where the company is going. And it's something that I, I became enamored with. I, I felt like this is, there's such a great opportunity here and it's something that I wanna be a part of and I actually think I can help contribute to. And so that was, um, um, I think, a really important point. And I guess lastly, I'd say, it's one thing, as you know, John, to, to have a good strategy, but leadership is really important too. Like you need to have the right leadership to execute on that strategy. And meeting with Doug and you and the other segment leaders and even the, the corporate functions, I recognize what a great team that you all have. And, and I think it's pretty rare to see a team like this that everybody has their oar in the water rowing in the same direction. And that was sort of the thing that sold the deal for me. You know, it's, it is important to, to have a, a purpose and mission. The company does have a purpose to save money and help people live better. We were just walking in the room here and I remember sitting about 50 feet from here as a new assistant buyer back in the mid 90s. We had about 150 super centers and one day we were gonna be big in the food business. And uh, just it's just a reminder that big things are possible if you stay with it. And um, yeah. you know, so glad that you did. Now speaking of um, people and, and results, I wanna talk about that just for a second. But I wanna start by saying thanks to everybody in the, in the field, in the home office, all the teams, transportation, logistics, supply chain. There were so many unique challenges last year and thinking about where we started the year with inventory backlogs and, and you know inventory that was coming off the ports in March that should have been here October the year before. Right. And, and so many headwinds that you walked into. And then to think that we just ended the year with a strong second half with momentum, momentum coming out of the year, momentum on the top line, momentum on the bottom line. Um, it's just a, a really impressive result. And there's so many people that we should appreciate for for doing that. So first, you know, thanks to everybody on the on the teams. Um, but you know, with that perspective, um, how are you thinking about communicating results and what we did today for the entire company? Because I'm responsible directly for Walmart US. We're both on the same leadership team together. But how do you describe a company like Walmart in, in a minute or two? It's a hard thing yeah. to do. It's tough to do. And, and it's, um, you know, there's so many areas where you can miss up too. Mm -hmm. But it starts with like we've got a, a great platform and we're in a great position. And, and you recognize that particularly as you look over the last nine months where we've really differentiated ourselves from our competitors. Uh, you always see or hear of a focus from the investor community on your financial measures. Mm -hmm. What's been interesting coming here is the focus on some of the non-financial measures, notably inventory. Mm 
And so that's been like one of the top questions investors ask us every time. What's your inventory position? Where is it? Uh, you know, what's the, what's the year over year increase going to be? And the broader team did an amazing job of addressing that, not only appropriately, but very different from a lot of the rest of the competition. And when we sit here today announcing earnings, and we're able to say that inventory is flat, it's down 3% in the U.S., people notice that. And they notice that we are a team that executes. And I said in my prepared remarks today and on many of the calls, like the speed and nimbleness in, in which we executed was really emblematic of almost like a startup company. To, to have a company our size that has moved like that and addressed a problem, it, it's impressive. And investors notice that. Yeah, it's so exciting to see how many people just jump in and help and attack problems and the way people work together is really interesting. And one thing you said a, a moment ago, as you were thinking about joining the company, we've, we've changed a lot of the way that we're positioned. And I remember five and six years ago, reading headline after headline, like stores are, stores are dead, it's a thing of the past. <clears throat> and the work that was done here in Walmart US three years ago to position the business as an omni business and not just a stores business, which is a really important big business and then e-commerce business, same. Bringing those together has resulted in almost $80 billion of growth in three years. And when I started with the company, Long time ago, um, right at 30 years ago, we, we were a $55 billion company, including international exams. Right. And we just grew 79 in one segment. So it's really impressive what people have done, but um, it, it doesn't hurt to dream a little. And sometimes it's best to, to pick a number and then work backwards on the way to get there. So a lot of really cool stuff has happened. Um, you know, thinking about the US business, um, the role in the portfolio, um, the mix is changing, the way we operate is changing. You've just jumped in this about a year ago, just a touch under. So, so how do you feel about the way we're positioned? Yeah, well, one, just the size is really impressive, particularly when you think about our physical footprint. And that's relevant when you think about where the world is going with respect to retail, meaning that you can't just be a brick and mortar retailer or can't just be a, 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 an e-commerce presence or an online presence. You need to be both. And those omni-channel retailers are gonna be the ones that win. And I would argue that if you took our starting position with 4,700 stores or whatever it is in the U.S., that that's a better starting position than maybe even having uh, a great e-commerce site. Because there's no one has a monopoly on having a great customer experience in e-commerce. No one has a monopoly on one day and two day delivery. Arguably, those are easier to develop than going and putting 5,000 stores in the U.S. within 10 miles of 90% of Americans. And so. The business is clearly changing, and, and what we're seeing as it relates to our financials is the, the, the composition of our earning streams are changing. And so you've got retail over here, which is 4 or 5% margin, but as you think about advertising, which has a much higher margin, even some of the, the other areas, fulfillment services, and those growing at a much faster rate than our core business, it means that our profit margins are going up over time. And investors are beginning to understand that, and, and that's what they want to see. They want to see our operating income grow at a faster rate than sales. And if you're an associate out today in stores or fulfillment centers and, and you read earnings or you saw any information, what would be the one takeaway you'd want them to hear? The one takeaway is would be that our value proposition with customers is really resonating. Um, absolutely. As in, in times like this, when consumers' pocketbooks are stressed and they don't, their dollars aren't going as far, they're going to Walmart um, because they're finding value and they're getting the type of experience that they want. But I think there's an important sub-bullet point to that. And that's that we've always been known for price, but to me, like what's really different today is that our recognition in terms of the value that we're providing in terms of convenience is on par with price. And that really speaks to some of the things that we're doing in, in e-commerce with pickup and delivery, scheduled delivery, things like that. And I think positions us very well for the future. What I've heard over the years and makes a lot of sense is, is loyalty in retail is the absence of something better. So the idea of just having great quality and a great price working doesn't always work because the, the time tax that people have to spend if you take too long and you're not convenient really matters. So, it's the combination of all those that's that's adding up. And, and so, look, last thing, um, I'm taking a lot of your time, but I'm grateful for it. Um, is there? I just want to know if there's an experience or something you've done with the company so far that's memorable, like a visit to a store or a distribution center or an associate that really stood out along the way. Well, you started doing that my first week on the job, and, and there's many of those uh, memorable experiences. But a question I get asked a lot coming to Walmart and being still relatively new here is, what's different than what you expected? And 
to me, like there's a lot of companies that talk about their mission or their purpose, but there's a disconnect between what they say externally and how they operate internally. And that disconnect doesn't exist here. When you read Save Money, Live, Live Better on the Wall, like th that's our ethos. That's what we do in everything. And so when you go out to a store and you see an associate or a store manager and you see the passion that they have to actually serve our customers and help them, that's, that's unique. It doesn't exist everywhere. It's something we should all be very proud about. Yeah, we are. And um, to me, that's the best part of the job is getting to spend the time that I get to spend with store associates, with our, our management teams around the country who are figuring out how to solve problems. So, you know, we, we listen all the time and, and as you have feedback and, and you want us to know about something we can do better, let us know. But great spending time with you. Um, to the whole team, congratulations on a strong quarter, a strong back half and, and really great performance given where we started the year, which was tougher and, and we're positioned much better. John David, thanks for coming on today and thanks for everything you're doing. Thanks for having me.